Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review, and I hope you are having a great day today. Today, we're going to be talking about His Last Bow, which was named His Last Bow, an epilogue of Sherlock Holmes that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote. And this one starts out a little differently, so we're probably not going to skip those pleasantries this time. It opens up, and we don't know who it is. I think they're both German. They're sitting and talking about how they have been undermining England. They both kind of flatter each other's egos. And so the German agent von Bork is the guy getting ready to leave. The other person that I was talking about is Baron von Herling. They were having a conversation and Baron von Herling was so very impressed with Bork's work on getting the secrets and this, that, and the other for the German intelligence agency that he's praising Bork on. He will be received as a hero. And it is in that conversation with the Baron that we find out that Bork is just waiting for one last person to come, an Irish-American Altamont. He's supposed to be bringing this last big treasure. It's going to be some naval signals, and then he can depart. And so Baron Herling leaves. It was just before Ultimate came. During that process, his housekeeper turns off a light as she is going to bed. Now, Altamont, he's worried about security. He's, he's really a paranoid individual, and it's okay. Most people would be in that kind of a situation, right? At least I figured they would be. Altamont points out, what's this package? Bork had this conversation about, oh, that's, that's the not secret stuff that's there for people to find, and it looks like there's secrets, but there's not. I actually keep things in my safe. Altamont points out, that, well, that safe's not all that great, and he goes, no, 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 no. This, this is a double combination safe where you have to have to know a word and a date to be able to open it. A little bit of back and forth there. And Von Bork actually starts bragging about that combination lock because it was the date that he was leaving of the end of the month of August of 1914. Now, Bork and Altamont, they're not really getting on with each other quite well because Altamont wants his payment before he will let Bork see the papers that he has for those naval signals. And of course, Bork wants those papers before he gives payment. Hmm. So we have a, a little bit of a dilemma. Now, as Bork is inspecting the package that Altamont had given him, <laughs> well, he finds out that it's a book about beekeeping. Bzzz. That really doesn't have to do with naval signals, and he's really surprised by that. I bet he was even more surprised about that chloroform-soaked rag that got smacked over his face shortly after he got the package and started to look into it and found out it was about bees. Here comes the shocker, Altamont if you hadn't figured it out by that point, was indeed Sherlock Holmes. The chauffeur that was mentioned as any other chauffeur that slumped down in a vehicle to relax and chill out was Watson. Now, of course, we have more of that dialogue between Watson and Sherlock after the fact, rather than just, here's the story, here's the conclusion, Sherlock and Watson were characters. Now, when Bork wakes up on the couch, I think it was the couch, he starts to have a dialogue. He's like, oh, I will get you. I will have... I will have the better. I will have retribution about this. And Sherlock, he, he did that odd thing he does where he's like, nah, you're kind of a sportsman. So am I in a way. Whenever we realize that at least you didn't fall to a lesser foe than myself, I don't think you will do anything about it because we both played the game. You did it for your country. I did it for my country. Not only that, there's all these accusations that start flying around from Bork to Sherlock. And Sherlock's like, yeah, I did that. I, I kept this from happening. I did this. I made that fell. And yeah, the intelligence I've been feeding you probably is a little bit on that false side, buddy. So, um, yeah, good luck on all that. Bork is really upset, and he's like, well, this is an act of war. Or Sherlock points out, well, you know, your country kind of infiltrated ours, and you've been stealing our stuff. Now, during this process of them not necessarily arresting because they didn't have a warrant or anything like that, but getting him subdued, being Bork, and then into the car. There's a little bit of dialogue, like I mentioned, between Watson and Sherlock. Watson finds out from Sherlock that this is a case he's been working on for two years. That's part of the reason why he'd been so incognito, and of course he would help his friend, and he was so happy when he was telegraphed by Sherlock asking him to come help. Guys kind of missed hanging out with his buddy. Loose paraphrase, but yeah. Sherlock shares the, some of the details of whenever I told you that this has been a long case. It's no exaggeration. He had traveled to Buffalo, to Ireland, to America, and he had worked hard at getting into at the bottom ranks and working his way up to that point so that he could close that case. And in that process, he became an angered 
Irish American. He had worked his way into kind of a secretish kind of a society there and then had caught the attention of one of the people and then had started to climb those mentioned of four ranks. There was this whole quote towards the end, and I'm going to call it a quote. It's something that Watson had said to Sherlock and Sherlock said back. And I think that poor Watson had missed the point of it. I'm sure I'm probably not the only person that thought that about that quote. There's an east wind coming, Watson. <laughs> As I mentioned, I really think that Watson misunderstood it because he said, I think not, Holmes. It is very warm. I'm pretty sure what it was, was Holmes was telling Watson that, of course, the war is coming and it's going to be a really bad thing. But after the bad is taken care of, then things are going to be for the better. With that out of the way, that was the last one. That was his last bow. And there was a neat little tidying up that Arthur Conan Doyle did at the end of the story because we had this book about bees, right? And that was brought up in that conversation with Watson and Sherlock. And Sherlock tells Watson, well, you know, I've stood by and I've watched the criminals move here and there and do their little things for so many years. Now I'm gonna go watch the bees do their thing. So they, they gave us a, a good idea of what Sherlock was going to be doing once he retired. It was a nice little wrap up really because instead of it ending in complete tragedy, Sherlock ended on a good note of saving the country, helping outwit spies from Germany, and to go enjoy his retirement after amassing quite a bit of wealth, I'm sure, and just abiding. Now, how do I feel about it? How do I feel about the entire thing? Because I went into Sherlock Holmes. I had read, I think, two of the short stories in the past because they seemed very familiar. It could have been because of TV adaptations. It could have been because of movies, of course, or that kind of a thing. I went into it absolutely blind. I didn't read any reviews on it. I didn't watch any videos about it or anything. I just picked up a prepackaged collection of all the stuff, figured out at what dates they had came out and started reading them. This gave me a really good experience overall with Sherlock. There's a couple things whenever I was looking up the dates that I found this mention of the game. And of course I, I remembered something about that, but I didn't really understand what could be so enjoyable about something like that? Pretending that this person is real. As I looked into some of the other things, I found out that it actually could be a big rabbit hole to jump down and have some fun with. But I haven't gone down that road. I'm not playing the game or anything like that. But it has to do with the way that Arthur Conan Doyle would incorporate some of the events and some of the things that would be in newspapers or this, that, and the other. But almost back up things with Sherlock Holmes where it would seem like it was really real and those things could have happened. Yeah, so I can see that. I can appreciate it. And if you play the game, that's awesome. Of course, I am a little bit sad that that was the, I'm thinking, the last one. I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm going to make sure that I didn't miss any of the stories. And if I did, of course, I'll make another video. But I expect this will be the last one. So overall, what I recommend somebody reading the entire collection of Sherlock Holmes from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It depends. It depends on you, really. And the reason why I say it depends on you is it's a big undertaking, so don't try to do it all in a month because you'll probably get burned out. What I will say is that Sherlock, even though he can be a pompous little peacock of a man, he is what he is. And Watson is that definitive sub alpha type of a personality that he wants to see his best friend succeed and he's earnest, he's honest. He only really has the best interest of the people around him in mind and even has some morality issues whenever he's with Sherlock on some of these cases and feels that maybe these aren't things that he should be doing. You can see a little bit of back and forth in his own mind, in his own mindset, whenever it comes to the things that's going on around him and his difficulties with accepting them and even participating in them at points because he trusts in his friend wholeheartedly and completely, he goes with him or goes along with him and helps him accomplish his goals. As far as all the inspectors go, of course Lestrade, Lestrade, whichever way that's actually pronounced, he he was a, a personal favorite of mine because he's he's stereotypical in a lot of the ways. It makes me feel comfortable having a character like that whenever I'm reading it. Do I think that Lestrade is the typical type of individual that would be in England? Absolutely not. That's why stereotypical type things usually bother me. Sure, a lot of people want to say they're there for a reason, but those things are being shattered and those things are going away and we'll be better off whenever they finally do. So for as far as character development goes, for Sherlock and Watson, there's a whole lot of it over the entirety of the collection. 
However, uh, for the other characters, it's really not because they're come and go and they're just little pieces that move the stories along. And so on that, it's, eh, but it wasn't ever meant to be that way. As far as the stories go, some of them are feel good, some of them aren't. The majority fall into the kind of a gray area for me. And the reason why is because of that morality gap of Sherlock. Of course, now we're a lot different as a society and as a pupil than we were back in the 1800s, for sure. We have progressed and that gives me a little bit of hope for humanity. And what does all this have to do with it. It was good to see the mentality, the thoughts of people from that time period. Even if it is just through literature, it gives you a window and a way to see what it was kind of like. Because sure, it was fiction. Some of it was going to be idealized and some of it was not going to be idealized. And so overall, if you enjoy detective type novels, whodunit novels, that sort of a thing, this is certainly something that I would suggest you check out and read. If by chance you'd like to read about characters that constantly come up against a problem that they have to figure out and solve, then it might be for you as well. If you're into big dialogue scenes, or if you're into huge, huge character development or epic type stories, this probably isn't going to be so much for you. Now for myself, what did I really think about Sherlock Holmes from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? I found him incredibly enjoyable throughout. He's a little bit chauvinistic from time to time. He's a little bit on point about a lot, but also he was a fictional character. He's a lovable character on top of that. As well as that, we had Watson and him having this little bromance going back and forth, which was enjoyable to see. So overall, I enjoyed the entirety of that work in a great way. I found it highly refreshing and that there was a little bit of substance behind it as well. And if you do choose to read them, I hope that you enjoy them just as much as I did. Thank you for joining me on this Friday. Like, share, subscribe. This has been Shane with Shane's Books and Review, and I will see you ooh, on Monday.